Can you talk about the work that you and John Lewis did to desegregate the Greyhound buses? <laughs> yes. Well, after the sit-ins took place and we were able to uh, desegregate the lunch counters, one of the places that we uh, had uh, the, uh, you know, integration was the bus station itself because we had lunch counters at the bus station. And so, therefore, uh, we uh, also sat in at the uh, those lunch counters. So the Greyhound bus station was completely desegregated before the Freedom Ride started. At Christmas of 1960, John Lewis and I decided we were going to take the Greyhound bus, but we were going to sit on the front seat. The Greyhound bus was still segregated, even though the station was integrated in Nashville. So I sat behind the driver, and John sat behind the, uh, uh, the, the next seat in the front of the bus. Well, we rode all the way from Nashville. We got off at Troy, uh, John did, and I continued. And uh, we desegregated that bus. So when the freedom rides were announced uh, by CORE, Congress of Racial Equality, there was no question that we were going to go on the freedom rides. And uh, so happened that John was 21 in February of that year, 1960. And I uh, was not going to be 21 until the uh, July. So we applied. John Lewis got accepted, but I didn't get accepted because I needed parental permission, and my parents wouldn't give permission. My father said, I'm not going to sign your death warrant. So that was already before the Freedom Ride started that there was some question about whether or not we would survive. Well, John went on the original ride, and as mentioned, he was beaten up there in... Uh, uh, in the first uh, leg of the first uh, part of the Freedom Rides. But we decided we were going to continue. And the reason why the Freedom Rides continued is because John Lewis came back to Nashville and said, let's go. So we got permission to take over the Freedom Rides. So I didn't need parental permission. So he and I got together, and he took the first group, and I was had the backup group because you have to have a backup group in case if the first group got arrested, the only way you can continue is to have some more people ready to go. And so we had strategy and we had experience and um, we had leadership ability and we continued that freedom ride from Birmingham on into Montgomery. In Montgomery, we were met with uh, violence. And this was after we had traveled from Birmingham to Montgomery with armed guards the federal, you know, National Guards and all those people were surrounding us because they had promised to give protection, the governor. But once we got to the bus station, all of the protection uh, disappeared, and we were on the platform. And uh, Jim's work uh, was beaten up, and John Lewis was clobbered, and I got kicked in the uh, chest and had three broken ribs. So there was nothing you could do with broken ribs. So I went through the entire Freedom Rides with uh, three broken ribs. I didn't tell my fellow Freedom Riders because they might have insisted that I not go. So I just kept quiet. I quietly suffered the entire trip.